afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome. Blessings to everyone. Blessings. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Blessings, blessings. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. From Spartanburg, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Women to Women 1211. Thank you so much. Diane Spikes, Trina. Uh, going, God, doing her, <laughs> doing her, amen, hello, Dee Williams, we appreciate you lifted hands, thank you for inviting your followers, um, Char Barnes, God bless you, thank you for inviting, thank you all so much, yes, thank you, St. Louis is represented today, Sharice Brown, Kelly, thank you all so very much, we appreciate you, amazing, 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 yes, Yes, thank you, Maquin. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, greetings, greetings, St. Louis. God bless you, Brother Moses. God bless you, Alicia. Yes, hello from Tallahassee in Washington State. Blessings to you guys. Thank you, family. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Cecilia. You are amazing, amazing, amazing. Yes, God is is so faithful to his children he's so faithful yes texas thank you thank you yes houston south carolina detroit yes god bless you good more good afternoon it may be morning somewhere else it may be morning in california amen new mexico god bless you london uk we appreciate you brooklyn new york sharice brown god bless you Yes, Mount Pleasant, Texas. Um, the song is by Psalmist Rain, uh, We Commune. Yes, it's from her album. Yes, Psalmist Rain. Yes. Wow, you've been listening to it all week. God bless you. Vicki um, Lesions, God bless you. Yes, Diana Harrison, we appreciate you. Taurus with Purpose, thank you for inviting. I love Jesus. Thank you for inviting Washington 519. Thank you so much for sharing and inviting others. We certainly appreciate you guys. You're amazing. Truly amazing. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your anticipation of your suddenly. Yes. Jesus, Jesus forever. Yes. Let's show 17. Redefined soldiers. Emily, God bless you. God bless you. Great for what God is doing in your life, Emily. Cecilia and Abigail. Sylvia, God bless you. Yes, yes. Good afternoon. God's chosen. We love you guys, too. We really do appreciate you. Yes. Thank you for inviting your followers. Angelina, God bless you. Yes, suddenly you're here. Thank you so much. Greetings from Orlando. Thank you. God bless you, Kente, man of God. Yes. Shantiria, God bless you. Hi. Evian, God bless you. We love you, Karen. Thank you so much, Demetra West. Thank you for inviting your followers. There is a first timer on here. It's Sun Kang. But thank you so much. Please welcome our first timer on Periscope. Please send her some hearts. Send them some hearts. Let them know how much we appreciate them and welcome them to our family. Yes. Yeah, that's our heart to be closer to God, to draw closer to Him. He said, if you draw close to me, he'll draw close to you. Amen? Yes. Yes. God bless you. Hallelujah. Blessing, South Carolina, Columbia. God bless you. Yes. Somebody hum the melodies of your heart to the Father. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Here in Tampa, and I'm sure wherever you are, it's beautiful as well. Yes. Thank you to Vincia. God bless you. Sun Ken 43, thank you for inviting. 
inviting free people. Thank you so much. Yes. God bless you. Yes, God is faithful. My daddy's girl, thank you for sharing on Twitter. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for inviting your followers. Monica from 1960, thank you so much. It's Psalmist Rain, R-A-I-N-E. Yes, Psalmist Rain. You can see her on YouTube. She's also on iTunes. I agree with you, Karen, that Jesus loves the beach. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, well, our title uh, of our scope today was Prophetic Indicators That It's Your Suddenly Season. Right. And so as we were looking at some of these and dealing with some of these thoughts, um, it really came as a result of some other things that we've been dealing with in, uh, uh, in our local assembly. And so over the last couple of weeks, we have been experiencing... <laughs> Uh, stronger manifestations of, uh, of spiritual warfare. Let me say it like that. Yes. And uh, and so let me, now let me let me uh, let me add a caveat to that. One of the things that I would say with that is because there are people who have experienced our local assembly, and you may be watching. And one of the things I want to say is that uh, spiritual warfare is not people. Right. But demonic presences can inhabit people. Right. And or people can open the door to the enemy uh, using them right. and then they can be used to be able to destroy or to distract or to divide or do other things. Sure. And so that's any of us. The enemy can use literally any of us in any situation. Yes. And so uh, so I don't want to get that confused. I don't want it just to think that it is people. But I do want you to be looking out to understand uh, that there are prophetic indicators of your suddenly season, of your right. next season, of your season of expansion, your yes. season of, you know, of increase. There are, there are indicators. There are, there are prophetic indicators of this. And I want to share with you some of those today, and I want to show you even biblically where some of these things are. Because yes. uh, there, you know, we, had a, you know, we had a situation that happened uh, in, in, you know, in the service, and so I had to end up, after this service, I really felt... I really felt uh, I really felt bad because of the way things happen in the service, and so I called my spiritual mother. And so when I called her uh, to ask her for wisdom about it, uh, then she began to tell me. She said, "No," she said, "This this the thing that's happening, and some of the things that are happening are only prophetic indicators mm -hmm. that you're in your suddenly season, and you're about to really increase, and you've tapped into a vein that you were not in in before." Right. And so when I looked at this, I said, "Okay." And then she began to prophesy to me, but she began to minister to me. Because of the fact that she said, I don't want you to think that, that, that you did something or that you didn't do something the way you were supposed to have done it. Actually, you were really nice in how you've handled some of these things because I may not have handled it that way. Man, I've seen some people who've handled it a lot different. Right. And, so, uh, and so one of the things you got to understand is that when you enter into your prophetic season and the season of your prophetic uh, suddenly, then what, what happens is, is that you gotta, you got to understand it and begin to look at things differently. you got to begin to understand. Uh, a lot of these things differently because sometimes, uh, let me tell you something else that happened. Another thing that happened is I, I observed something. And what I observed was I observed that in some of the situations where the enemy has attacked, I saw people running. I saw people who did not have an understanding of what was going on right. and people would get up and actually transition from the place. And I'm like, how do you leave when we're in the midst of battle? How do you leave right. when, when warfare is going on? But I also understand that that means that those people need more training. It right. means that they need to be trained to understand that confrontation is not always bad, that right. sometimes in warfare, and if you're a warring tribe, and if you're a church that, that deals with the prophetic and the apostolic, you cannot have an apostolic ministry without warfare. Right. So we you know, so we like the prophetic side of it, we like the goosebump side of it, we like all that stuff, but we do not like the side of it that we when we have to go into war right. and we have to deal with demonic principalities and demonic systems and we have to deal with that. So 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 with that, that means that people need what? They need more training right. so that they can understand what they're really dealing with and what they're really engaging. Again, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we are fighting against powers and principalities and rulers of wickedness in high places. Yes. And so when, when when we understand that, Jesus. we have to understand, okay, we were teaching a class 
fast on intercession. And so then there was this disruption in the midst of it. And so I, I had to understand, okay, the enemy does not want us to pray. He does not want us to join together and pray. He does not want us to understand how to pray. So right. what does he do? He brings disruptions. He brings uh, discord. He brings challenges. But those of you who know your call to this ministry, you cannot shrink back. You cannot run when the enemy comes in like a flood. You have got to stand flat foot and right. begin to look him in the eyes and deal with the demonic presence. Again, not right. the person, but the demonic distractions that are coming behind the person right. and operating through the person, the person that's opened right. the door. And right. sometimes it's not that people intend to open doors. Mm -hmm. It is a fact that sometimes they open doors uh, through the things that they've done, through the things that they've been in, through, through, through life systems, through hurt and pain and deep hurt. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those things open doors to the demonic realm and people have opened up the door and so they, they are hurting and so that's why sometimes even they're drawn to apostolic ministry. So right. it's not that we can tell these people you cannot be a part of what we're doing. No, you just have to have the anointing that sets them free. Right. I thought about the points. Uh, uh, I thought about when G, when the, when the man brought his son, who was who was, who who had uh, he had a lunatic spirit, right. and it had tossed him to and fro. And, and and so they brought the son. And when they brought the son, the disciples couldn't cast him out. And so Jesus said, "Bring him to me. How long will I suffer with you?" And so Jesus was frustrated because they didn't understand how to dispossess the demonic presence that was in the man right. and help him to get free and help yes. the little boy to get free. But that's why Jesus came to set the captives free. Right. It's not just right. so we can have a good time and church can be a social club. Now, I, I, let me see. Some people are, they, they do want to go to a church that's just a social club. You know, you want to deal with the nice side. But if you go to an apostolic church, and I tell people that right. my church is not, you know, my church, you know, I love teaching. I love all that stuff. But my church is not just a, it's not just a church that's a social club. That's just right. not what it is. Right. You know, we're prophetic. We're apostolic. Right. We have a heart, amen, to go to the nation. Right. But we're not just going to the nation so we can tour some yeah. country. We're going to the nation so we can dispossess demonic principalities right. that are in those regions. We, we are not just going to teach another Bible study. Yes. If that's the case, they already have people in their nation that can teach another Bible study. Uh, if, if that's the case with our church, there's another there's another 500 churches that's down the street that's going to be a good social club and it's going to teach you a good Bible study, but yes. we want to teach you how to really access your purpose and your destiny and then begin to Jesus. really walk in purpose and destiny. Amen? We want you to help get free. This is not going to happen at the nice little Baptist church down right. the street. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not against Baptist church. I'm not against denomination, but I'm telling you, this is not going to happen. You're not going to see demonic manifestations. You're not going to see that. Uh, Jesus walked into the church in Luke chapter 4, into the synagogue. Luke chapter 4, the Bible says there was a man with an unclean spirit when he saw Jesus. Now that, that same spirit had been in that, that synagogue week after week, hanging out, doing whatever it wanted to do. And when Jesus came in, the, de the demonic presence mas uh, manifested. Right. And, and I was talking about, now I'm going to get to the indicators in a minute. This is just my precursor. But we were looking this morning, and in my, when we came out this morning in the pool that was a baby snake now listen to this in the pool was a baby snake and so instead of me getting afraid of the snake no i went and got what i needed to get him out of my pool number one because i understood that he did not have authority he right. was trespassing on my land number one yes. number two when i went to go get him my assignment was to get him and kill him are you listening to right. me come on right it, was, it wasn't yes. a run from him because it was really my wife now is depending on me to deal with it. But she was she was like, let me get you what you need because we get ready to deal with this. Yes. She didn't run. She didn't get scared. She said, I know we're standing together. We're going to defeat this thing right. together. Neither one of us right. is running. It's, it's, this is what it is. Amen. Absolutely. And so he had gotten Absolutely. in here. But check this out. Again, a prophetic indicator. Now, when I begin to search, when do snakes come out? When do snakes hatch? Mm -hmm. I begin to look at it. And in March and April are times when, when when what when you have more snakes coming out right well we know spiritually that oftentimes snakes are are symbolic we, we, uh, lucifer was called a snake there were other ones so during a certain time of year there is more demonic presence and more demonic indicators and more demonic woes and so what happens is i looked at it i said all went along we didn't have any challenges. We didn't have any things that were coming, uh, you, you know, that were even coming against the ministry. But now all of a sudden, mm -hmm. here comes the springtime, and it's time for our progression. It's the time of life and the time of season when things begin to progress, when, you know, when the grass begins to grow again, right. when things begin to turn green again, when you begin to flourish. And now yes. all of a sudden, here come the snakes at the same time. Right. And so then I did my research, and I found out that the snakes come out, and they stop hibernating around uh, March and April. So we look at, you know, we look biblically. And we see biblically yes. that April and, and uh, that March, April is the time frame for what? It was a time 
frame of the Passover. It was right. the time frame when Jesus was crucified. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the time frame when the church experienced its greatest persecution. Right. It's when you experienced the greatest persecution. But mm -hmm. then also, it's the time that we're expecting the greatest amount of manifestation of the presence of God, the resurrection, yes. the day of Pentecost. Right. All yes. these things happen yes. in that springtime. It's the time right. of harvest. And yes. so you got to understand this and be looking for these prophetic indicators that the enemy is going to come after you because it's your suddenly season. Are right. you listening to me? Jesus. Come Absolutely. On, because one of the things that even as you were saying, um, the enemy can be, be comfortable in a place because they're never challenged. Mm -hmm. You know, the word doesn't challenge them. Many times, you know, many sects or whatever are, are looking or, you know, just create a seeker-friendly uh, environment to where they don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to talk about sin. They don't want to um, address anything. And so when we look at the word of God, we see that Jesus cast out devils, that he interrupted situations that was not, that did not represent his father, that did not represent the kingdom of God. And so he addressed it. And as even he went into the temple, he, he cast them all out. He turned over the tables. He said, because you've made my father's house a, a, a house house of, of, of a den of thieves and so um and god is saying for us even in this hour and in this season lift up our voice we have to decree and declare the word of god without fear without trembling we have to be steadfast and unmovable we have to be uh strong we have to be name of Jesus we we don't it's not about offending the devil no we don't just talk to the devil we don't just say you know it's gonna be okay no we've got to cast the devil out that's what Jesus did he just cast them out he didn't talk to him he didn't you know try to hold a conversation with them but he cast them out and it's really amazing that we've come to a time and a season that we don't want we feel like we don't want to offend anyone or we don't want to offend the devil let me tell you the devil he does not play fair he's playing for keeps he's coming after your stuff he's coming after your sudden season he's coming after your family with the vengeance he's coming after your ministry he's coming after your business and so you got to know how the enemy operates and wow and, and even in this time of momentum that the tactics that he tries to use to get you off course mm -hmm. yeah i was looking at that so i looked at i looked at this and as we yes. look at it uh then what we did was we we understand that during this a prophetic indicator uh, of your suddenly season number one you're going to have increased pressure you're going to have increased warfare. You're going to have increased confusion in some areas. You're going to have increased voices. Now, let me talk to you about a few of those because I think this is going to bless you. Number one, increased pressure. Mm. Do you remember? Matter of fact, I want to take you to a scripture, Acts chapter 16, uh, verse number 16. Now, check this out. Uh, here, here it is. Paul is in uh, in, in the area of, of uh, what, what we call the Galatian region. And so he's there, Acts chapter 16 and 16. And it says, as it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met with us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour so if you were if you remember and this is something that God had to really deal with me was the fact that there were different apostolic and prophetic callings everybody's right. assignment is not the same mm -hmm. so those of you who understand that you have a more warfare mindset and mentality you cannot let somebody with a Barnabas anointing talk you out of the fact that there is real real warfare right. uh, and now let me qualify that P the Apostle Paul was a was a was a a pioneering apostle. Mm -hmm. He he went he pioneered in different regions, pioneered in different cities. Mm -hmm. He went to different places, and so he had. Places that were different from those that, that, that Barnabas had to deal with. Barnabas. Barnabas was a powerful uh, anointed apostle of God. But you, ne I never saw Barnabas deal with a demonic presence. Mm. I always saw Barnabas. Barnabas and Paul, as a matter of fact, came into a place where they came into disagreement. When they came into disagreement, it was because of the fact that, that Barnabas felt that he needed to nurture John Mark. So Bar Barnabas was relational. Mm. He was covenantal. That was his issue. Paul, although he was concerned about covenant, he, he was concerned about the mission and the assignment. So they get ready to go on the second trip, and they have this issue but the the reality was B paul had an assignment to possess demonic principalities yes. rulers of wickedness in high places now we understand that all of the different mantles come from jesus all these mantles come from jesus right right and so that but but with that uh some have pauline some 
Peter, some deal with James, which have governmental uh, apostolic anointings, and then some of them have, you know, even as even as Barnabas did, he had, he was dealing with relationships have to work together but we have to understand it and I needed to understand uh, I, I needed to understand my assignment and yes. my thing. I love doctrine I love dealing with doctrine in the church I love dealing with leadership mm -hmm. I love dealing with demonic presences and principalities. I don't run from them I run to them. It's my assignment right. I understand that. Yes. I am confrontational I will not allow a devil and a demon to sit in the place where I'm at and allow them to take over and allow the demon to tie. Again it's not the person. It's the demon that I'm dealing with yes. and there's nothing wrong with that's my assignment amen it's my assignment so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna at the same time and then I also understand that because of my assignment I'm gonna draw people who want to be free from different demonic assignments are you right. listening to me and so I had to learn that at first I thought that if somebody asked did my military uh, background help with that it really did I think Absolutely. it did because I was a combat engineer I ran into the battle my soldiers if they were on here would tell you I would run to the battle I Jesus. think that's why God let me out because I was not the type of person that was going to run from yes. a battle, from a fight. Yes. I didn't Come do on. it in the world, and I will not do it in the kingdom. I'm not Jesus. bagging down. I'm not doing it. I'm called to dispossess demonic powers and principalities yes. and rulers of wickedness in high places, and I will not back down. Are you listening to me? Yes. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't apologize for my nature and how I'm made up. But I'm not mad at a person who has a James anointed, who right. ha who only has a to rule and to and to just help people to deal with issues and stuff like that. I'm not upset with the person who has a Barnabas anointing, right. who only sees things according to covenant. I'm, I'm not upset with them, amen? I'm not upset with Peter, people like Peter. Peter's, Peter is using a lot of healings. He's using a lot of breakthroughs. He's used to spread the gospel and to teach in different places. We look at 1 Peter, 2 Peter. We see him encouraging uh, the, uh, the people that right. were in his regions, but, yes. but, you, but you don't see him always having to deal with a demonic presence, amen? Yes. And so I'm telling you, you and I'm saying that to say that that's why some places and some people deal more with deliverance than others. So you can't you you you, you can't let people talk you out of your assignment and your right. anointing. Yes. Amen. Because it's your son. mantles as it yes. pertains to your anointing and your calling and yes. so when you walk into those you got to understand that you're going to increase that the warfare in in your assignment area is going to increase Absolutely. if you're called to demonic to, uh, to, to deal with deliverance and spiritual warfare then you're going to begin to and you're going to begin to to receive or yes. people are going to be drawn My to you God. that need more deliverance so yes. you can't run from it and you can't listen to people who are not called to do what you do mm -hmm. and tell you that that's not what they're called to do yes. some people are called to do business and marketplace you right. can't you can't you can't tell people that are called to the marketplace well it doesn't take all that come on just be in the church no, no. you you're called to the marketplace you're called to make money yes. you're not called to be broke yes. all your life you don't yes. want to shout and dance on Sunday amen and business. then be broke on yeah. Monday you want to be powerful you want to have money and so if that's what God has called you to do to help finance guess what walk in your anointing yes. amen but do not let talk you out of what God has called you yes. to be in amen so so I talked about increased voices when David was getting ready to fight Goliath, David's brother Jesus. begins to try to talk him out of the, the assignment that he had. He knew that Goliath was bigger than him. He knew that he couldn't right. wear Saul's armor. But at the same time, he knew that that was a battle that he had to go into, and he had to go into it. He had to fight the battle. He had to win. Why did he have to go into it and win? He had to go into it and win because that was... He wouldn't have been able to sleep that night if he had not done what, what he was called to do. Amen? Right. Come Absolutely. on. Absolutely. He because, would not have been able to sleep right, that night. Because when we, we don't walk in our assignment, more than us is affected. It's people around us. If, if David had not gone into battle, if he didn't, he didn't really trust in the name of the Lord and trust in what God had told him to do, they would have his family and others would have still been taunted by this demonic force, by Goliath. But he knew his assignment because God had prepared him. He had prepared him when he was taking care of the sheep. He prepared him with the lion. He prepared him with the bear. Now, and, and so his, his faith had was was progressive so as as increased so did the warfare hmm. as he increased so did the demonic presences that came against him to try to get him out of place to try to destroy him but he had to understand his assignment what god had called him to do as a as a under shepherd mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to guard and mm -hmm. to protect to 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 understand how to feed his sheep and you know so and to take care of them and so he had to protect them and here he was it wasn't the sheep this time it was people mm -hmm. It was people, it was his family, it was other people that were affected. 
was attempting to do. Right. First, was it First Samuel chapter 17? I want to look at it very quickly. I'm not going to stay good. there long. So Amen. Good. I'm not going to be there very good. long. I'm trying to find the scripture where his brother comes to him. So, so first Saul tries to talk him out of it. Amen. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so then not only did Saul, did Saul try to take it to, uh, talk him out of it, uh, but then his brothers tried to talk, uh, try to talk him out of it. Oh, who do you think you are? What do you think you're called to do? Do you really think that this is your assignment? Then finally, Goliath tries to talk him out of mm -hmm. it. Goliath is like, you you a little boy. I've been fighting since I was a, since I was a youth, man. And you think you're going to is the enemy will try to talk you out of your assignment. Jesus. Discouragement will try to come. Yes. Something will try to discourage you. And this is what these voices are. Mm -hmm. You hear these voices that are trying out of your assignment, but you yes. cannot abort your, your mission. You cannot abort your assignment. Yes. The re the destiny of somebody else depends on you being in place, doing what you're called to do. Number one, that's so so somebody else's destiny depends on it. And not only that, but David's destiny depended right. on it. Why? Yes. Because what did they say? They said, David, David said, what am I going to get from this? Mm -hmm. So out of defeating the, the Goliath, Jesus. David got his promotion. Right. But his promotion would not have he had shrunk back from Goliath, and Goliath was bigger Jesus. than him. He was more skilled than him. Mm. He, he even he had talked more noise than he did. But David, what did David have on his side? He had God, and he, he knew that the power of God was operating with him, and the power of God yes. was on him. And so you got to know that you cannot shrink back. You better not shrink back. Yes. Your whole life and your My whole God. future and your whole suddenly season depends My on you God. doing what God is telling Jesus. you to do and being in the place that you've been called to be. I'm telling Jesus. you, increased voices are going to to come as you, uh, your as you that's right i love what you said rosie cook askins rebuke naysayers disqualifiers i was looking last yes. night and I'm, I'm hoping i can find this but but i, I was saying that, that some of the some of the things that are going to as a result of your of, of your uh of, of uh things that are going to come where where is that where's the thing at i'm looking for it my god i gotta i gotta find is that it okay um let me see. I'm look, okay, yep, there you go. You're gonna critical people are gonna come. The voice, some of the voices that are gonna come to you are gonna be critical voices. They can find fault with anything, right. anything and everything going on. They're gonna find fault with it. Then you're gonna find argumentative voices, voices that want to just sit and argue with you all night and just want to prove their point. Amen. Then you got you're gonna have fault finding. Amen. Always desiring to find fault and be critical of someone, and they're not willing to invest. I tell people, even in my leadership. You do not come to me with a problem without having a solution. If right. you don't have a, a solution, don't bring me a problem. And number two, not only not if you don't have a solution, but if you're not willing to invest in it, don't bring me a problem. Yes. Don't always find fault with what we're doing, and you and you're not to it to help fight in the midst of the battle. Yes. You do not need people in your battle with you who are not willing to fight with you. Listen Jesus. to me, because all they're going to do is they're going to waste your strength. They're going to sap your energy. They're going to vex you. And have you in a place where you're tired all the time. Jesus. And so some of the reason why you're experiencing what you're doing is because you're listening to the wrong voices. Oh you got the wrong people and that you're listening to the wrong yes. voices, the wrong situations. Amen. And so uh, now listen, you need to be sharing because somebody needs to hear this. Yes. I'm telling you, somebody Jesus. needs to hear this because I'm telling you, there are people who say I'm called to spiritual warfare. I'm called to the prophetic. I'm called to the delivery. But every time a demon shows up, you run. Every time a devil shows up, you run. You're not called to it or you need more training because when, when re I had a person call me one day and I'm going to go back to these other. I had a person call, I had a prophet that called me and they could prophesy accurate. They could prophesy at the drop of a hat. And so all of a sudden they called me one day and they said, they said, uh, they said, hey man of God, they said, man, this, this woman has put some witchcraft on me, and I know that you know there's witchcraft being put. I say, any real prophet that I know, any real <laughs> apostle that I know, lives for the day that a demon would uh, would would, uh, would come against them, amen. Or somebody would talk about putting some witchcraft on them. I'm telling you, when that stuff happens to people that are prophetic and apostolic, you make up in your mind. You say, listen, brother, uh, you can. I even love yes. when we go back to uh, to Acts chapter 16, verse 16. It said, and the woman came and she did it day after day. And day Paul after. got vexed in his spirit. Mm -hmm. he, got, he said, look, we're uh -uh, we not going to have service as usual. <laughs> we're not going to prayer. Brother, we're stopping everything. We're going to deal with this demon today. This demon is coming out of her. because yes. every day, And she didn't say anything, but these right. are the men that show us the way of salvation. What she was saying was right, but he knew that it was the voice of a demon speaking right. and not the girl. So right. he didn't deal with the girl. He dealt with the spirit of divination. Right. The word divination is the word python in the Greek. Mm -hmm. The word python deals with a constrictor. It's a constricting spirit. It's a yes. spirit that comes to stifle stuff. It comes to disrupt. Jesus. It comes to distract. And so those spirits are 
Lord, he said, listen, I'm vexed with this, man. I, I'm stirred with this thing. This thing is bothering me. It's gotten on my nerve. I'm not dealing with yes. this. Come out yes. of her yes. of Jesus yes. Christ. And Jesus. so that's what we have to do. We have to confront these things. You got to get fed up with them devils coming after you. You got to right. get fed up with right. them being around you. If devils and demons are comfortable being around you and they don't manifest, you got to check yourself. Jesus. Okay? So then we go to, uh, we, so we get critical voices that are coming, argumentative voices, fault finding voices. But then when you get around them, amen, every time you get around them, it's like you get drained. You get tired. You're like, my God, I'm drained. I'm tired. This is, this is, this is. This is crazy. I mean, why am I dealing with this? Then you got people with the victim mentality. Amen. People that always poor me. It's always these people get around you and you listen yes, to them. And as prophets, somebody else bothering them or coming right, after them. Coming out. And when yes. you're a prophet, listen to me, when you're a prophet, people are going to come to you for solutions. And one of the groups of people that come to you are people with the victim mentality. And when they come to you, they will literally sap your strength and drain you if you're not careful. If you right. don't know who, what, what, what the spirit is that's operating, they'll yes. drain your spirit, your spirit. And you'll wonder why you don't have strength to deal with and minister. Then you got time wasters. These are people who the only thing they do is come around you and they want, they just want, it's always, you know, they always got something going on. They always want to talk. Talk all day. Get to the point. Tell me what the problem is. Tell me what the issue is. Let's deal with it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk to you all day long about the same thing. Let's deal with the issue. Let's, let's get an understanding of what we need to deal with and deal with it and get done with it. All right? The next one. Let me give you the next one. Uh, su super spiritual people. So then you have the super spiritual people. If it's family, you got to deal with them too. Amen? Because yes. sometimes family are the closest one. It was David's family that was, that was the voice that was trying to stop him from fulfilling his destiny. Right. It was David's wife at one time that was trying to get, stop him from praising God. Do you remember when Absolutely. he came back with the Ark of the Covenant? He yes. was excited because the presence yes. of God was back. Yes. And now all of a sudden she comes in and she's like, oh, Oh, now, oh, McCall, you remember that? Yes. She comes in and she was like, oh, you think you dancing before the Lord. You think, that, and, and she, she's looking at it in the carnal. She's looking at the other women that were, that were, that were seeing him worshiping God. He wasn't concerned about that. Right. One thing he was concerned about was worshiping God. Yes. And the, God dealt with her. Uh -huh. about Because whenever you come between a person and their worship with God, you're going to get dealt with. Amen? Yes. Let me give you the last one and I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to let my wife finish talking. Uh, then you got... Angry people, discontent people, toxic people, leeches, super spiritual people. Everything is always spiritual. Mm. Everything is not always spiritual. Sometimes you need to be able to laugh. So there are times when my wife and I, uh, we, we are both in ministry. We serve in ministry together. We're right. in full-time ministry. This yes. is all we do. Yes. And so uh, there are times when my wife says, you know what? I am not a prophet. I am not the pastor. Don't call. I'm just going to be yes. a wife. I'm gonna, yes. We're going to go to the movies. We're going to laugh. Don't nobody call from anybody. I don't want to deal with because we need to rest. Sometimes we right. need to rest and I'm not going to call anybody and ask permission for when I need to rest. They I mean, I just need yes. to rest because if, if not, then you won't have the strength to continue to persevere right. and continue right. to push. Amen. Right. And so right. sometimes you need a break. Right. Absolutely. And, so, and there's nothing wrong with that. So mm -hmm. in your suddenly season, I want you to be aware of those different voices, the critical voice, the argumentative voice, the fault finding voice, the vexing spirit, the, the strength sapping voice, the victim mentality, the time wasters, the super spiritual, the toxic people, the the angry people, the discontent, the discontent, and the in debt. Because as you these things are going to come, and when these prophetic yes. indicators come, you got to be watching and observing. I'm telling you, I just got off the phone with my spiritual mother, and I came out and saw the snake. and And the Lord said, "See, that's what she just got through prophesying." She said, "It's going to be an increase of those in your services because you've tapped into another vein, the temperature." Right. And I even looked at it. I said, "The temperature, the temperature is changing." When the temperature during March and April changes, guess mm -hmm. what? Snakes come out, and so they come out during that. Because they can't be in it when it's under 60 degrees. 60 degrees to 110 degrees, they're out. But then when it gets to a certain temperature, they can't come out anymore. Right. And so what I'm learning is, is that there is a certain place in worship where the snakes can come out, where things can manifest. But then it gets to a certain place in, now they don't come into an environment that's cold. So they don't come to chosen frozen church. They don't, <laughs> demons don't manifest in those environments. But when the power of God manifests, Luke chapter 4, Jesus comes in when he begins.
You know, then some of you wonder, well, why do demons always manifest around me? Why are there people around me? Amen. And, 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 and just stuff comes, you know, comes around. But, but what happens is you have a certain temperature in the right. spirit that when those come, when it comes yeah, out, the snakes are that. out. And so between this temperature and that temperature, but then there also comes out to a certain temperature when the to the extent that that nothing that nothing can attack you amen so right. there is another dimension so the snakes can operate between 60 and 110 when 110 comes they can't hang around so you need to get so hot in the spirit Jesus. you you need you need to get so warm in the spirit that demons can't stand around you they can manifest but they can't stay they got to get delivered amen and so i'm telling you that these are prophetic indicators yes. of your suddenly season yes. many of you have been wondering why is it that you've been experiencing more pressure and more more, more stress and more yes. frustration, but I'm telling you, it's because Jesus. it's your suddenly season, and the Jesus. enemy understands. Just like we were talking yesterday about how we hear the sound of the abundance of rain, I'm telling you, the abundance of suddenly is coming to your house. And and I'm telling you, it's time to set yourself on fire because there is something. That will kill and annihilate every demonic principality Jesus. and every assignment from hell that's been framed at your life. I'm telling you, if you've been going through this, if you've been feeling this, if you've been dealing with this, yes. if people have been manifesting on you just out of the blue, yes. if you've encountered more pressure Come and more on. frustration Come and more on. stress, like the Apostle Paul, these people Jesus. are coming at you. If you're like Jesus God. and they're lying on you without a reason, then you know that you're getting ready to enter into your suddenly season. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you you dare get frustrated, yeah, you better stand and you better get around some people who are the, the right voices. Nothing wrong with listening to voice, but don't listen to the wrong voices. Don't listen right. to people. You're going to be tired, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to mm. give up, they've sapped your strength, and then let these voices that sap in your strength because just like we see the example uh, in Job and we see Peter talk about it in first Peter mm -hmm. uh, the, the scripture said that when the sons of God came so did the devil amen right. and so my wife always says when God wants to bless somebody he's and you got to be able to differentiate between the voices that are sent by God and frustrate you and stagnate you and stress you out yes. and keep you get you distracted so that you do not get into your suddenly because I'm telling you Jeez. it's here it's now and so you need a greater level of discernment ask yes. God God yes. where is my greater level of discernment so I can know who's with me and I think it was Joshua when the, uh, when the, uh, when the, um, uh, when the angel of the Lord came Joshua said are you are you with us or are you with this and the angel of the Lord said, I'm, I'm on the Lord's side. And so you need people. Sometimes you don't yes. even need people that are with you or with God, but you need people on the Lord's side. Yes. And if you're on the Lord's side, work together. And so that's my exhortation Jesus. for today. I'm telling you, I feel this thing in my spirit. Ooh. I'm telling you, go back and listen to this. Share it. Let other people hear it. Let other people see So suddenly season, increased pressure, increased voices, increased warfare, these things that are yes. going to come at you, yes. but you got to make up your mind and declare that you're going to destroy them. Do, don't, do, don't you dare run from them because the same devil that you run from today and that you leave alive today is going to be the same devil that's going to destroy your family members and your sons and your daughters tomorrow. You Jesus cannot afford to laugh at demons and play with them in this season. This is the season to destroy them, to utterly Jesus. cut their head off. David cut the head off of his Goliath and you got to cut your head off. When that snake came up today I had to cut his head off you know why I had to cut yes. his head off you had to cut his head off because if you leave his head alive he will come back amen he will grow another body he will grow back and so I'm telling you him cut his head off yes. deal with that yes. devil don't run from it don't let the devil Jesus. intimidate you don't let the yes. voices intimidate yes. you I'm telling you you got to cut the head off of it my God Jesus glory to your name this has really blessed me today as well you know just to and you have been agreeing with what the word um, what the word has gone forth um, but 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 continue to be encouraged and one of the other things voices that will come against you that uh, uh, or people or situations that come against you those that are critical those that are argumentative those that are fault fighting strength zappers that have a victim mentality the time wasters the super spiritual the toxic the leeches those that are angry those that are discontent those that are indebted and many times people will try to put their burdens upon you and you spend more time dealing with your assignment mm -hmm. and so in this season you can't allow anybody else to burden you down with what they should be doing so 
do it because sometimes people are lazy. Yes. Can we be honest? Absolutely. We've talked about that before. Yes. People are lazy. They don't. They want you to spoon feed them. They want you to. But this is a see. Let me tell you something. For those of you who that you're called to do greater, this is not yes. your season of spoon feeding. Mm -mm. This is not where you want somebody to spoon feed you. No, this is the season where you understand that it's time for you to grow up, yes. put, tighten up your shoe straps, say. Mm -hmm. Put on, put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants, and decide that you're going to war with the enemy for yourself because yes. you, it's, it's, it's time out for, for you expecting somebody else to do it for you. No, it's time for you to fight for this thing. My God. You got to fight yes. for it. There, the yes. scripture we talked about, I think it was in, uh, I think it was in, was it Deuteronomy? No, it was in, it was in Joshua uh, or Judges. I think it was Judges chapter 3 uh, where the scripture was talking about how, uh, how, how there were some enemies that the Lord left mm -hmm. because he wanted Israel to learn how to war how because to war. some of them had not not knowing how to fight beforehand. Yes, absolutely. So it's your season to learn how to fight. Yes. Grow up and fight. Yes. Grow up and fight and, le and learn these prophetic indicators. Mm -hmm. Go back and listen to this. Share this. If you yes. just came on and you have not shared it, I'm telling you, I feel like it's illegal for you not to share today. Because <laughs> yes. somebody dealing with God. some of the things that I talked about. Yes. We're not just doing these scopes just to be doing it because we don't have anybody else. We don't have anything else to do. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I got a lot of other stuff to do. I could, yes. I could be right other stuff but we chose to do these because we felt that it was that it was that it was it's stuff that people need and we need to share this amen Jesus. we need to share it so share share if you if you hear share share this man share this let other somebody else know what what uh the things that's going to help them amen right. so that they can have right. their eyes open because yes. you do not want to have other people in battle with you that don't see what you're seeing that haven't been through training to fight. This is why yes. every soldier in the United States Army, in the United States Marine Corps, in the in the Navy, in the every, every soldier has to go through the same basic training. Right. And so, if you all get this understanding, we're stronger together. Now, when the, we all know, let's lift up the banner. Let's yes. lift up the. Let's lift up. Let's decree the word. Let's declare the word. Let's begin to pray. Amen. Yes. Because guess what? When we do it all together, we're stronger together. Individual soldiers, we train them in companies, we train them in battalions, we train together because we're stronger together. Amen. Absolutely. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for letting other people know, amen, that um that that that, that, that this is on. Because right. somebody needs to be free today. Somebody needs to right. get their breakthrough today. Somebody yes. has been experiencing increased spiritual warfare. Somebody has been experiencing increased demonic presence. Somebody has been experiencing this stuff. And when they start to experience it, you got to be that person who helps God, them see where God. the enemy is trying to. Back. I'm telling you, if you're called to this, don't you shrink back and don't you listen to somebody who's not called to this side of ministry mm. tell you, oh, it doesn't take all that. Hey, listen, you're a Barnabas apostle or you, you, you're a Petrine apostle or you're a James apostle. But Paul was called to this. Are you listening to me? Paul yes. was called to this thing. Paul was called to the assignment to run into the battle. I was a combat engineer. Now, I got a lot of friends who were not even called to be in the military. They were not even called to fight. But then I have other friends who were called to other type units. Some of them were cooks and some of them were uh were, trans, were, were truck drivers and all kind of other stuff mm -hmm. but i was called to go into the fight and fight with demolitions and blow the head off the enemy blow the bridges blow the roads blow the minefields that was my yes. assignment and so yes. i have a temperament that ch i charge into the battle amen right. i got a stick of c4 in my hand and an m16 in the other hand and i'm ch i'm called to go into the battle i'm not called to sit back and wait on the Jesus. battle to come to me no i'm called to go to the battle yes. and the same thing happens in the area of spiritual warfare yes yeah, somebody's going say, oh, well, Jesus paid the ultimate cross. He did, but there was still time after Jesus had did what he did on the cross that Paul had to deal with that demonic presence that was in that girl. Are you listening to yes. me? He had to go into different places. There were times when they yes. stoned him. There were times when they didn't like him, but what did we say yesterday? We, we, hey, we, we uh, matter of fact, let me find the scripture from yesterday because I think that that scripture uh, that script, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Second Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians four and seven through eleven. He said, uh, he said, verse, uh, verse eight. He said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast yes. down, but not destroyed. And so, it always buried in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. So these are things that we have to endure. There are things that we have to deal with. There are things mm. that we have to go through. And 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 so everybody, everybody wasn't able to write what Paul, uh, what Paul wrote. Everybody Absolutely. wasn't able to say that. But yes. that was his assignment. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the other things, two areas, especially in ministries and apostolic and prophetic ministries, that the enemy will seek to attack and he will, he will target these, especially these two particular areas, and that is the intercessors and the prophets. Mm -hmm. 
guard those areas in the ministry like never before. As an intercessor, you cannot afford to allow uh, offense to come. You cannot afford to allow the enemy to get you out of place. You cannot afford to allow the enemy to get you discontented and discouraged because you cannot pray in a place. You cannot play, pray where there's offense. Mm -hmm. You cannot pray where you're discontented tenant and where you're discouraged and where and you, you have, can't pray uh, for people absolutely. that you dishonor absolutely you cannot and it's, you can't pray with them you can't do it absolutely you cannot do it so as an intercessor and as a prophet you've got to guard you've got to guard your heart you've got to guard your heart with all diligence you have to guard it don't allow the enemy bring that those things into your mind into your emotions in the name of jesus you've got to continue to, to watch yourself and, and you know, and, and and understand the tactics of the enemy. Know when, know how he's attempting to work in your life. And and again, he will send family members. He will send them to say different things to try to beat you down and try to you in whatever way. And it's not even, and, and sometimes it's not even the nature of that person. But mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the demonic force was able and presence was a, was able to attach itself and to speak through that person against your life, against your ministry, against what God has called you to do. So you've got to continue to stand. You've got to arise. You've got to go forth like never before. It, and it's time for us to be more on the on the offense than just the defense, that we don't just react when the enemy has, has struck or when he has sent out an assignment. We've got to be on the offense. And, and, and so even with the with the armor of God, as we look at the armor with the, with the with the belt of truth, with the breastplate of righteousness, with the helmet of salvation, with with the sh with the um, she um, with the shoes um, of peace. So with the, um, um, the the breastplate of, of righteousness, with, with the shield of faith, those are all defensive armor. That's part of our defense. But the offensive armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we've got to have the word of God on the inside of us that we have to send the word out before the enemy has the, has the time to send the assignment against us. So we've got to know the word. We've got the word of God over our life, over our lives, over those certain areas, over the prophetic, over our inner, or over our gift of intercession, over what God has called us to do. We've got to bathe those things in the word of God. We've got to be continue to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Amen. let me ask you this question. Who did not share this yet? Because I'm telling you, the devil does <laughs> yes, not want it. Even I'm is, telling this you, this is really blessed. Our, yes. our, our teaching on intercession during the service, our teaching on intercession was interrupted. And I knew, I said, why would it be interrupted? If we were just teaching a Bible study on something regular, yes. the enemy would not have attacked. But the enemy yes. wanted to attack on intercession. Why? The reason why the enemy wants to attack on intercession is because he does not want the saints Jesus. to pray. Jesus, right. He my sister, our sister did, uh, her, she was doing her meeting in, uh, in Birmingham about last week. And she said there was a man came into service and, and really just tried to get up on the stage and disrupt and distract stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my God. So that was a prophetic indicator that indicator. God was getting ready to do something amazing. So yes. when people start manifesting, right, again, it is not the people. I want to make sure I add that it is not people. But it is, amen, come on now, it's not people. But it is the things that people will open the door to that let yes. the enemy use them. Yes. And the enemy, if we open the door, he will use any of us. Right. All of us have been used yes. in some capacity by the enemy if yes. we open the door. Yes. And so we got to confront the demonic prince of powers and dispossess them. Yes. Jesus didn't counsel with them. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't pray for them. He dislodged them. Mm -hmm. He commanded them to leave. Right. And when Paul dealt with them, guess what Jesus. he did? Paul said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, to leave. To leave. You gotta go. Cut his head off. Mm -hmm. Cut his head off. Jesus. Cut his head off. And so that's what we've been doing. We've been cutting the head off of him. Amen. <laughs> Come on, cut the head. I cut the head Ooh, off that snake. Jesus. I didn't stop until I cut his head off. Yes. I didn't yes. stop. And that's what that's what David. David did. He 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 didn't stop until he cut the authority of the enemy off. Mm -hmm. So you got to cut. You got to go after his authority. You got to go after what he rules with. How he mm -hmm. rules. That's what you have. To, that's what you have to target. Because hmm. because because it's interesting. You remember when when Saul was sent to kill Agag mm -hmm. and the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. He kills all the Amalekites. He leaves the good stuff alive. Right. Then he leaves King Agag alive. Mm -hmm. Agag was the king. He was the head. Right. If you leave the head alive, yes. he's going to make sure that the body grows back. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So this is why you got to cut the head off uh -huh. from the body. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Destroy it. Yes, you got to cut off the mastermind. You got to cut off, you know, the thing that 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 devises those certain things against you. That's what you have to go mm. after. Now, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> See, now, now, this is why now, I'm. I got the book. I'm going to read it. There's a book called Prayer Shield. Prayer Shield by uh, C. Peter Wagner. It's an older book, but yeah. he deals with making sure that you guard your leader. Remember when Jesus said, "If they, if you attack the shepherd, the sheep will." Scatter. scatter. This is why we have to be, we have to guard our pastors yes. and guard our leaders. Right. We cannot let our leaders and our pastors go into battle by themselves. Your pastor's in battle and you run? You're Jeez. not, you, 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 oh, they, you, you're not even, 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 I hate to say it like that, but you're not even fit to stand with them in battle if you run when the fight gets hot. Right. Your pastor is in battle and you run from them? Your leader is, is in battle and you decide to leave them in battle by themselves fighting? That's not God's best. Mm -mm. So when I look at this, come on, when I looked at this, I thought about that. You got to form that prayer shield. Why? Because the enemy is always going to attack the head. Mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. going to attack the head. Mm -hmm. When I was in the military, it, we were always protecting our general. Always mm -hmm. protected our generals. Mm -hmm. When I'm with my leader, I'm making sure I'm there to protect mm -hmm. and make sure uh, that I'm watching. Why am I doing that? Mm -hmm. The reason I'm doing that is because I understand that there is an anointing that yes. they need, and there is a way for our leaders, have to guard our leaders, yes. and make sure that if the, that the enemy does not get to Yes. yes. God. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just like. I was trying to cut it off, Ooh. but it keeps coming. It's, I'm and telling then, you. Then, I'm, and then let me say this. Likewise, as, as a leader... My job is to make sure that if, if you were in my organization, my job then is to protect my sheep. Right. I, I will give the sheep. Right. I will give my life for my wife. Right. Why do I give my life? Because you're the one who helps me reproduce. Right. If the enemy is able to attack you yes, and good. stop your ability from reproducing, yes. then guess what? He stops our ability to leave legacy. Right. Come on. Absolutely. In the spirit and in the natural. Absolutely. If, you, if he stops my ability, if he cuts me off, then he stops my ability to produce seed. Right. Of course, you can go get artificial insemination. You right. can get... Right. A but that's not the promise. But, but it will never be the DNA that I was Absolutely. supposed to produce. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we don't want to get an Ishmael. We're waiting for Isaac. Come on. We need Isaac. We need Isaac. So it's important that we cover the people that God has assigned to us so that we can receive the promise. Mm -hmm. We can receive the full manifestation of what God has said and what God has ordained for our lives. That's it. Because the enemy is always after the promise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's always after the promise. And he'll send, he'll send an imposter. He'll send different things before the promise comes That's so it. to get you distracted. He will always attempt to send the counterfeit. And then not only get you distracted, but get you to settle. Yes. Because once yes. you made covenant with the counterfeit, yes. when the Jesus. from this and walk into your purpose. Absolutely. Come on. Absolutely. You mean to tell me if you get, because once you get married, you develop soul ties. Right. So once you marry the counterfeit, you develop. Right. We, 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 we love our relationship with the world yes. and the things of the world. Yes. Not realizing that if we divorce the world and get married to Jesus, right. it'll cause us to walk into the greatest dimension and the greatest place in our purpose in life that we've ever experienced. Absolutely. And then there are times when we, we get connected to the counterfeit and somehow or another God allows you to get out of it, but there's still a soul tie to the counterfeit. They want you to go back to it. want you to go back to the counterfeit and then you're not able to really receive the promise because you counterfeit. <laughs> Don't you miss your My suddenly God. season because you 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 were more attracted to the counterfeit than, than you were to the real thing. Amen. Jesus. Listen, we're gonna get out of here. I can <laughs> preach this all day because I'm stirred about it. Amen. I'm stirred about it. Because yes. I see these prophetic indicators in my own life, and I'm hearing so many people that are talking about them in their own in, in their lives. And yes. so I think I think it's the season. Amen. 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 Praise God. People find themselves sleeping. I'm with ready the enemy. for it. That's yes. it. Somebody, somebody just said that. Yeah. Yes. Sleeping with the enemy. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you all for praying for us and with us. Thank you for standing. Thank you for interceding on our behalf. Um, we, we certainly couldn't um, overcome and endure without your prayers and without mm -hmm. your support. 
um, in this time. It's a very critical time. God has called us to really encourage others to, to Made to arise to a place so that you can walk in the place and, and, and receive what God has for you um, in this hour as you're suddenly, God is releasing your suddenly, and this is the year of fulfillment, that God is fulfilling his word um, in your life. And so continue, continue, continue names come up. Um, there's Dennis, there's Deliah, there's Karen. As you see their names, continue to cover them, continue to pray for them. Receive everything that God has for them. Amen. Um, as you see uh, the different names, as you see them on Periscope, continue to pray one for another. We all need each other's prayers. Yeah, that's the name of that book, Prayer Shield. Prayer Shield. And I'm going to be reading that more in the days to come because I think it's, I think it's important. Yes. Uh, and I heard about it through my apostle. He was saying that when he first read it, he heard about it. I think he said he bought 400 copies or more copies of it. Right. He said, and, uh, and Peter Wagner called him because he was like, I want to know who you are that you bought that many copies of my book. And right. so because when somebody buys 400 copies of your book, one person, then you want to know who they are. Amen. <laughs> yes. And so, and so when he, he said when he bought that many, it opened the door for him to know who he was and they'd be Begin to develop relationship, and most yes. of you know he was a person that really, really favored Apostle. But I think that the reason for that was because Apostle was hungry enough to find out what he was teaching, right. and, and understanding how to cover and our leaders is valuable. Gift. Sewing into that gift, Amen. yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, we're getting out of here. We, we love, love you guys. guys. Listen, last night um, I was I was in a place where I was really we had experienced some warfare, and so I just needed to pray and get with the Lord. Uh, I wasn't tired. I just need to get with the Lord and hear from the Lord and hear what the Lord was saying. Jesus. And so that's very important. Sometimes uh, the Lord and and I let me say this: I apologize for those of you who've set your clocks to get up and we were not there. I apologize because I don't want to waste your time. But at the same time, I knew I needed to get with God and hear what God was saying mm -hmm. because of the warfare that we encountered. With God, find out what's going on, find yes. out what happened, find out yes. what allowed the enemy to be able to do that. Amen. Yes. Uh, can we find you on Facebook? Yes, you can. You can find us at Lejean and Valora. That's our, our Facebook page. We have a joint Facebook page, Lejean and Valora. And uh, of course, my wife is Valora Cole, and I am Lejean M. Cole Sr. And, um, and then, of course, uh, what else is I going to say? Oh, you can go to our website, www.lejeanandvalora.com. The things that we're teaching on spiritual warfare, we're going to be teaching when we go to, uh, to uh, Huntsville, Alabama, during our gladiator camp. And these yes. are the principles that we teach at that gladiator Jesus. camp. So if you're close to, uh, to Huntsville, Alabama, I want you to get there because it's going to bless you. Amen? It's going to bless you. I want you to get there. Get to gladiator yes. camp. You can, you can sign up for on our website at www.lejeanandvalora.com. You can mm -hmm. also go to her website, which is uh, um, 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 trailblazersintl.com. Uh, but then also, uh, you can also go, because we're going to come to Indianapolis next month as well. And so we'll be there. Our friend, uh, Private John Veal, will be with us. And uh, you can also yes. sign up for that at Uh We have... Uh, App, absolutely. And uh, some of we all come to Chicago, I will volunteer. Amen. Bless your heart. Thank you so much. Uh, and yes. so we're, we're looking at that because we do have a lot of people that are connecting with us in Chicago. Chicago and, yes. uh, and so we will be doing something there. I just got to find out what it is and how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. But listen, we love you guys. We thank love God you. for you. And uh, we're excited about what God is doing in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody said, when you come to California, I'm driving from Washington to see you. <laughs> My God, thank you so much, born of God. Yes. Uh, that, that really means something. We're coming to Charlotte in November. Uh, we're doing a meeting in November in Charlotte. Us and another couple couples are going to do a, 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 a relationship meeting in Charlotte in November. So, yes. uh, but but even with that, we're going to be talking about how to keep the devil out of your marriage. Amen. And so uh, we love you. We thank God for you. We appreciate you. Yes, yes. we will pray for him, and we'll keep you in prayer. Uh, Listen, we love you guys. We talk to you soon. I love you. Uh, I need to order another T-shirt from your website. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. You guys are awesome. Bless Again, you. we're getting out of here. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. Bye-bye.